In this video, we're going to take a look at the headphone output of the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 audio interface, the fourth gen version of this audio interface, to see if it's powerful enough to power a set of 250 ohm headphones. Now, for the purposes of this video and my favorite headphones to use, if I'm using closed back 250 ohm headphones, I like the Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pro. And if I'm using open back 250 ohm headphones, I prefer to use the Bayer Dynamic DT990 Pro. If you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, we do have links down in the description below where you can find everything that you see here from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible. Now, in terms of the overall specs of the headphone output on the Scarlett 2i2, the fourth gen version does have a lot of big upgrades compared to the third gen version. In terms of dynamic range, which is comparing the quietest moments, the loudest moments, and the dynamics of what you're listening to, the fourth gen version has 115 dB, and the third gen version, the previous version, has 104 dB. So that's a pretty big improvement. The benchmark is you're always kind of aiming for 120, but the fourth gen 2i2 is getting much closer to that. In terms of output gain or output power on the Scarlett 2i2 for the headphone jack, the fourth gen version has 10 dBU and the third gen version has 7 dBU. So again, that's about a 30% increase depending on how you're looking at it, which is quite significant. In the previous video, when I reviewed the third gen 2i2, I did note that it was a bit quiet on the headphone output. So this is a pretty big improvement compared to the third gen. But what does that actually mean? Let's compare this three different ways. If I'm listening to music with the Scarlett 2i2 here, the fourth gen version, I find a comfortable listening level is around 40%. That's when I, it feels like a good listening level that I can listen to for a long amount of time. If it's my favorite song and I really want to turn it up and have that full immersive sound, I find that I can get it where I want it in the headphones, where it's loud, where you wouldn't want to listen to multiple songs at that volume if the output gain is at about 50%. At this level, there's no hiss, no static, no gain or anything. It sounds really clear. And it, like I said before, it does have a much better dynamic range than the third gen version of this audio interface. The other way I look at this is when I'm editing unfinished audio or unfinished video, making videos like this one where I haven't compressed everything, I haven't normalized the audio. For that, you do need a bit more headphone output. I find somewhere between 60 to 75% and again, this is quite comfortable. There's no static hiss or anything like that. And this does feel like I can get the volume that I need with a two set of 250 ohm headphones. And last but not least, the last way that I use this is if I'm doing live vocal monitoring while making a video like this. If I have direct monitoring turned on on the audio interface, I find that I can get the level that I want in these headphones if it's at about 80%. Now, compared to the previous version of this audio interface, at 80%, I'm not getting hiss or static or anything like that. And I'm able to live direct vocal monitor my recording on a video like this. So this would work for videos like this or live streaming or live podcasting or online meetings or conferences. Now, if you do want it a little bit louder, and sometimes I do, you can go all the way up to 100%. This gives me closer to the volume that I'm looking for. And surprisingly, I don't hear any hiss or static out of this unit with this headphone jack turned all the way up to 100%, which is a really big improvement over the previous version of this. Is this enough gain for me? It's enough. It's workable. For my personal preference for live vocal monitoring like this, I would prefer to have just 5 or 10% more headroom in order to drive the headphones a little bit more when I'm recording live and live vocal monitoring like I am right now in this video. So in summary, the headphone output on the Scarlett 2A2 does work well for 250 ohm headphones if you're listening to music, editing audio, or editing video. If you are live vocal monitoring on a live stream, I find that it's just a tiny bit short again, but it is definitely workable. I wouldn't say that this is not compatible and it would not work for you. Just for my personal preference and my ears, I'd prefer just a little bit more volume. I hope this video has been helpful. Again, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, we have links down below. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.